Priestess, it's Alex Worley, and I am joined by Natasha Case. She is the CEO and co-founder of Cool House. She has combined her love for architecture and food. Two things that you wouldn't think that go together, but you have made them go together. Tell me the story behind this genius idea. <laughs> yeah, so I'll, I'll make it so you think, how could they not be together yes. always, right? Um, yeah, my background is architecture and design. I studied for seven years. Um, uh, Berkeley, then UCLA. So I think I'm probably one of the only ice cream ladies with a master's in architecture, yeah, right? Probably. Um, but my my kind of you know the the problem that I that I uh, sought to solve, which is so much of what entrepreneurship is about, was just in architecture. It felt very you know disconnected and and not approachable for people. A lot of my peers would felt intimidated by the conversation. So the way that I came up with to make you know architecture more fun, accessible, memorable for people was with food. Um, and I started playing around with different products under this, you know, concept, which I started calling Farkitecture, Food Plus Architecture. Just, you know, um, high concept dinner parties and different products. And then I was uh, working my first job out of grad school at Walt Disney Imagineering. And the recession hit just a few months after I started. So as part of this, you know, Farkitecture, you know, idea and vision, I started baking cookies, making ice cream from scratch, naming the combinations after architects, punny names like the Frank Berry, the Mies Vanilla Row, the Minimalism, and I was handing them out as comic relief at the office uh, when people were getting bad news. So you just played, yeah. like you were just having fun. Yeah. And a lot of times people don't give themselves permission to do that because they're yeah. like, this isn't going to help my goals, this isn't a tangible step, but yeah. you literally turned something fun and made it into a thriving business. Tell me about where you guys are all at today. Yeah, so from those early kind of, it was almost a passionate hobby back then, those early days, um, we, you know, I met the co-founder, um, you know, not, not, uh, long after I started it, I was doing it a few weeks, really. And we uh, were able to, um, I think, capitalize at the right moment in time. You know, we were one of the early um, artisan ice cream companies back then. It's not that long ago, but food was a very different space, especially in the freezer aisle. And we're one of the first Twittering food trucks of our time. And we took a risk and we put it out there. We launched a Coachella in 2009 with a, a barely drivable, you know, postal van that we were calling an ice cream truck. Didn't you find it on Craigslist? Yes. I think I read. Yes, we found it on Craigslist. We used my personal credit card. That was our whole financing, $5,000 limit to launch. And it was just- Just kind of MacGyvered yeah, together Yeah, totally. Truck, we just did to it. Coachella. Absolutely. And that's why I tell people, you just got to put it out there, you know, action, not perfection. You don't want to get into analysis paralysis. You just have to go out there and create your minimum viable product and do it. So um, I think timing and also just kind of perseverance, we, you know, we really struck a chord and, and really the, the, the brand went viral. And from that, we were able to capitalize right away and just, you know, kind of hold on to the reins. And now we have 11 trucks, a fleet of trucks in L.A., Dallas and New York, uh, a, a standalone brick and mortar and a kind of kiosk uh, here in L.A. as well. And then distribution in about 4,500 grocery stores with our prepackaged ice cream sandwiches, pints and bars all around the country. Which is the biggest sector yes, now of your business. Exactly. That's taken over. I think it's a little over 75 percent of the business at this point. So yeah. when you launched at Coachella, that was probably the perfect event to launch at because like you said, you went viral and yeah. had it not been introducing that product to that community that likes interesting, creative things yeah. and loves posting about it on right. social media, <laughs> that may not have been possible. So yes. that was a really strategic choice. Yeah, I mean, well, I guess you could call it strategy now, but um, <laughs> it's it's absolutely, and, and it's still a big part of our brand. You know, I think that kind of grassroots marketing is not only, you know, it's more affordable in a lot of ways, it's more experiential often um, but also I think it's about not only the voice of your brand but giving people who are your followers and fans a, ch a chance to express their voice you know you want to create that ripple effect that's what it's really all about and that's how you go from being a local kind of hero to being a brand with national presence so that's something we're still always building you know uh, from the person who just found a sandwich you know at the whatever Ralph's freezer aisle and loves it to like top influencers all of that is really key I think to building awareness how do you come up with the interesting recipes? <laughs> Looking at flavor trends, not responding to them, but thinking what's coming next. Um, you know, I, I, I love to do obviously seasonal produce and things like that in our seasonal lines at the shops and on the trucks. But I also like to get into what what are the things emotionally about a season that we expect? You know, what are what's the emotions of the holidays, you know, um, at the end of the year and how does that, you know, come to to come to be like the best ice cream? Or what's the emotion of summer? 
We just did a dessert island line, it's called. That was a um, blue Hawaiian ice cream. It was mm -hmm. like blue curacao, rum, pineapple, coconut, candied pineapple pieces. And you take a bite of it and you feel like you're on vacation. Cool. So I think that's something really special too. Um, but yeah, and we're very fortunate. Something advice I give people, you know, we're a brand, we do, we market our brand really well, but we are not a manufacturer. We have co-manufacturers, people who we can give, you know, ideas and, and recipes to and work with them on executing them. And that's very much how we've been able to scale as well. Um, so you, it's a really hard to do all of it. It's hard to be a maker totally. and a brand at the same time. Interesting. Yeah. Do you have a certain creative process or creative secret that allows you to come up with these innovative ideas? I would say just there's no off limits time for being creative. You know, it's not about sitting in a conference room and having a whiteboard. Like, yes, you can do that. That can be part of it. But you could be out at lunch. You could be traveling. You could be driving your car and an idea can come to you. So let your mind wander. Like no time of day is off limits for good ideas. So I know I read that when you guys went viral, you guys were growing faster than expected. So that yeah. must have come with some challenges. If so, what were they and how did you overcome them? Yeah, I mean, it, growth is always challenging. It still is. Um, I think that we just kept going, you know, because what you don't want to do is, um, is kind of not be able to strike while the iron's hot. So you just try to be as smart about it, as accountable to yourself as you can create budgets, create goals. You know, I, I, I have different types of financial checks that I do daily, weekly, monthly, annually. You really got to be on the numbers. I hear a lot of creatives especially say, I have really good ideas. I just need that numbers person. No, like you need to really understand all pieces of your business. Otherwise, it's a hobby. Mm -hmm. And now you're wildly successful. You just were on Forbes 30 under 30 uh -huh. list. Congratulations Thank on you. that. And of course, like you said, you're in a bunch of stores, multiple locations and food trucks. Did you ever think it was going to be this successful? Was that your goal or did it just kind of happen? Um, I think we have so much more to do. You know, um, I, I definitely very excited about how far we've come. And it's nice to feel that you've succeeded in creating a brand that's, you know, has legs and can grow. And I think you know you're you're always it's always just nice to look ahead too I mean um, on the one hand it's important especially I feel like in the US we're always like looking at the next thing looking next at the next benchmark. thing right yeah. exactly and it's good to, to stop and say like wow we did it like if we if we told ourselves seven years ago how far we've come we would we would be shocked yeah. and then again you get into that place you know seven years in like well why aren't we bigger why don't more people know about it you know um, but and I think yeah. that that's really refreshing to yeah. hear yeah. because everyone that yeah. I talk to is like, oh, I want that next thing, yeah. myself included. Yeah. And even you at this stage, you're still doing that. Oh, you're of course. still like, oh, I want that next thing. Just scratching even the surface. by many people's standards, yeah. you made it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's awesome. I mean, I also think too, there's, you know, um, financial goals are obviously really important, but it's like, are you happy doing what you do? You know, there, you can't put a number on that. So. Um, I'm very lucky that I love going, you know, being being a part of my team and, and doing the great things we do all the time. I'm, I'm not I'm not bored of it. I'm not over it. I'm not phased by it. I'm like still so hungry and excited. And, and that's I think that's the thing that's worth more than anything. What's the biggest obstacle you've overcome or maybe lesson you've learned as a entrepreneur, especially in the food industry, which tends to be more male dominated? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's definitely, you know, changing. Uh, the tides are turning where you see more empowered women um, being leaders and expecting, you know, equal pay and having an equal voice. And that's so, so important. But there's definitely still, I think, you know, territory to, to make up. So I think awareness is, first of all, so key, you know, that we as women share with each other our stories and experiences or even numbers like, you know, I encourage like my, my, you know, amongst friends, even that we talk about salary and what we're being paid. And that's the only way we're going to find out if we're all not being paid enough True. and just be transparent with it and not think that it's rude, you know? Um, and obviously asking for more is so important. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that women, we still think we have to prove things more than thinking we deserve them already. So just, you know, awareness and communication is so important for the mentality shift. And I really try to make that a part of, I think as, as I get older, I'm more aware of the, of the differences. So you have to make that more a part of your everyday and just empower the women around you the way that you know you would want to be empowered. You know, I can't tell you how many people um, I've met with that they were when they were students, you know, uh, at whatever local university. And now they're, you know, heading up marketing departments um, in companies that we want to work with. So you also never know 
you know, where people, what people are going to become. And it's so important to, to forge those alliances. Lastly, we always end asking our Empoweristas what their definition of empowerment is. <laughs> so what is awesome. yours? So my definition of empowerment uh, is connected to, we were talking about courage. And I think that that's a really key player because so much about it is overcoming that fear to, to feel that you can accomplish what you need to. Um, and there's also something kind of joyful about empowerment and, mm -hmm. and exciting. Like, like there's that thrill, like, okay, I, 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 there's something I know I want and now I feel that I'm in the place that I can go out there and get it. <laughs> and let us know what your definition of empowerment is using hashtag Empowerista and we'll show you some social media love.